Hello everyone, welcome to the session on writing an API using plain Golang. In this session, we'll target the functionality around the handle function. We'll understand the syntax for it. We'll understand how we can handle API routes using the handle function. And finally, we'll understand how API output as JSON can be returned using handle. Now, handle function is a part of the standard Go library, and this function exists in the HTTP package of the standard Go library. Now, what a handle function is, it registered the handle function for the given pattern in the default serve mark. Now, default first serve mark is the default server or the connection handler for the Golang runtime. If you want to learn more about it, you can refer to another session in the same play playlist where I've explained how I actually request is handled in the Golang. Now, let's talk about the syntax of the handle function. Now, the syntax says it handle function. Now, it accepts pattern of type string and a handler, right? Now, what this handler function, now this handler function will have the response writer comma request. Now, what does this mean? Now, the pattern, pattern here is actually the route. And now the handler function is actually the logic that will be executed based on the route received here. Now, since we have talked about the syntax, let's try to uh, apply it programmatically. Now, I will write a program where I'll say my handler function that, okay, whenever a route of slash will come, just apply whatever logic I will say and return the output to the browser. Now let's write a program now for, for that. What I will do is I will first say HTTP because this handle function exists in the HTTP. Now I will say handle function. Within the handle function, I'll say pattern. Now I want to run my API on slash and inside the pattern, I'll say function. And you see it says, okay, function. Now this W is the response writer object. This is what we are ultimately returning back to the browser that this R is the request object. Request object, it contains every bit of information that is existing within the response request. Now we want to amend our response writer so that we can write something to the browser. So for that, I will go response.write. Now this write accepts a byte array. So we'll pass the byte to it or the byte array to it. Within that byte array, I will say first API using handler function. Now I have returned in my API that how I can handle a route of slash. Now on route of slash, my function, this handler will be called. It will return this to my browser. But the next thing is to tell my API where it should listen to. Now, for that, I will use HTTP.listen and serve. Here, I will tell my API to listen to port 5000. And this is the default serve mark if I will pass it as a nil. And if I've, I have written my own server or a connection handler in Golang, then I can pass the object of that connection handler here. And here, if you see that I'm not initiating the default serve mark or a new serve mark, New serve marks or default serve marks are essentially the same because they are internally initiating the default serve marks only. If I have mentioned them explicitly or created an object of them explicitly in my program, then I have to pass the object for the default serve marks as well. But here this is being done in implicitly, so there is no need to pass to it. Now, completing this program, actually I have created an API in my, my Golang that will serve the output on route of slash and the output it will serve this first API using handle fund. Now let me show you here. I will run the program and it has started running. Now let me go to the browser and fire localhost 5050. Now see it says first API using Golang. So basically my API is running. Now let me close it and just for our information that whether the server is up and running, I will say, okay, server running on port 5000. Now here, if I will say now my router should be test instead of slash. Now let me run the program again. 
it is allow access it says server running on port 5000 that means port is working now if i'll try to run it on slash it says page not found why because slash is not configured as a pattern route here now i have to use the route test if i want to have some output out over it you see now there are different ways through which i can write it right now here what i have done is i have written a function now if i do not want to return a function here or I just say, okay, it's an handler fun that has to be here. And now I will write a function here and I'll say the name of the function is handler fun. So basically writing that and that is a different way of how we can write it. So basically what I have done here is I have told my program that, okay, if the route is slash test, then call this function. And in the previous version, what I have done is I have written the definition here itself in the function. But here I have written the definition and declaration of the function somewhere else. And I've just passed the function as a reference that, okay, you have to call this function if this is the route. Now let's do one thing. Let's tell you, tell you by running the program one more time here. The output should be same as we were getting since the route is test. Now you see we are getting. Now there is one more way through which we can do it. And that way is by specifying or specifying the object of the default server explicitly. Now how I can do it? I have told you previously that when we are explain, when we are specifying the object of the default server or any custom server, then we have to pass that object here, right? Now let me do it one one way. I'll say mark HTTP dot new surmark. Using this, I have created a new surmark. Now this new surmark, you see, it's a it's nothing but a, it allocates and return a new surmark, and that new surmark is actually the default surmark. Now inside that, now since I'm using the mark there, so I have to use mark, and it will handle the function when and here as well, I have to use much. That is all I need to do. I have created a default server object explicitly in my program. I have told that default server that, okay, in your handle function, whenever a route of test will come, you have to go to the handle function. We'll go to the handle function. Then I'm telling that, okay, my HTTP has to listen on port 5000 and then should have to run. Now let's go and Let's do one thing. Let's remove it from test to say R. Now let's run the API. It allow access. It is running on port 5000. Now remove the test here and do the R. You say the first API using handler function, first API using handler function. These are the three ways through which we can write the API handler. Now, in real-world scenario, this is not how you need to write the API for, right? In the real-world scenario, what we have to do is we have to return a JSON response. Now, let's do one thing. Let's try to return a JSON response from the API here. And for returning the JSON, we will use a package called encoding slash JSON. This package is also the part of Go standard library. There is nothing extra that has to be done for it. Now, let's do one thing for it. For that, what I will do is first I'll uh, create a custom data type of type truck here. I will say the first value is name, it is string, then it is age, it is int, then it is dob, and it is a string. So here I have created the custom data type of string. Now let's leave it like this and let's comment the fun function, handle function here. So what I will do is I will create a user and I will initialize the user, say the name should be mark, age of the mark is say 30, and uh, what we should, there's the next thing, is date of birth is 1990 So we have created a user. Now, the next line for us is convert this truck to JSON, right? Now, how do we do that? 
since I have explained you previously, we'll use encoding.json. Now, that package has a specific method called json.marker to typecast any struct or any type to a equivalent JSON for it. Now, how do we write that function is, I'll say J error, and I'll say JSON dot marker, and inside that marker, I'll pass user. So here, what I am doing is, I am telling my JSON mark package, marshal method that, okay, user is the struct that I want to typecast to JSON. Now, if the typecasting is successful, pass it to an object of J. If it is not successful, then pass an error. Now, in the next case, I'll say if error not equal to nil, then do one thing, panic with the error information. Correct. Now, I will say W is my response object. Now, I want to write this JSON to my response object. I will say w dot write and this json i am done so what i am doing is i'll say the route is get user i'm saying whenever the route of get user comes at port 5000 in my local host or for my api call this handle function and return the json related to this user that i have created now let's try run this program it says server running on port 5000. Now it is get user. Let's go to browser and run the endpoint of get user. You see it has returned the JSON to Pretty easy, huh? Now, there is one more thing. With this response writer and with this response writer object, there is a lot of things that we can do. Like we can set the existing header. We can add the header. We can write the header. Uh, we can specify what should be the response code that should be uh, returned. There are a lot of things that we can do. Let me try to do a couple of things and show you a couple of things here. Now, say, for example, if I want to write the content type of application JSON to my header, what I will do is I'll say w dot header. Okay, so this is a method dot set. Now, here I'll say content type. What should be? It should be application JSON. Application JSON. Now, if I want to add a header or a new header, so I'll use header dot add. Now, the name of the header is test. The value of the header is test value. Now, what if I want to uh, add a status code of it? So, by default, what it does is what a server does is if everything looks okay, it will add a status code of two hundred. If the everything is not good or there's some error, it will add 500, 400 based on what we get it. Now, but specifically for an API, I want to add a status code. So what I will do is I will say, write header. Now I'll say HTTP dot status. Okay. Status okay means status 200. Now let's, let's do one thing is first, we should not write it. Let's run the API on the same route get user now let's run it here and let me show you here in the browser network tab of what information it says okay it says the status is 200 because everything looks good now in the response header you see it says the test and a test value the content type is application json here we have mentioned and the new header that we have added and status code, it is saying 200 okay because everything is okay with it. And now let's do one thing. Let's change the status code from status okay to uh, bad gateway. That's essentially 502. Now let's see. Okay. Now if I run it here, you see. Though it has given the output because I'm not restricting the output here, I'm forcefully writing the response code here. So that's why it says the status of 502, that's a bad gateway. If I look into here, the status code is 502 of bad gateway and rest everything it is already passing on. Now, so this is all about the handle function, but there is 
a downside of inbuilt route or the downside of using these uh, internal Golang functions, right? Now, the first is the default routing system does not support request method like get, post, patch, delete while routing. It means that inside the callback, you need to mention the type of the method. It, uh, second, it does not support regex in the part two. And if you need more info about the URL like ID from the URL, then it is very hard to get. You have to write a lot of custom code for it. And that's the reason there are a lot of frameworks that has been built on top of these functions. So first I will be explaining each and every of these functions, and then I will explain how we can use the framework specifically Gain and Bigo. So this is all about the session. If you like my videos, please like, do like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you very much.